الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي زدني علما ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين سرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم in this ayah that I've recited to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to tell the companions, tell the companions and tell the believers in general that whenever you lose hope, whenever you feel sad, whenever you feel despair, and the reason you're feeling sad, you're feeling hopeless, you're feeling despair, because your heart has hardened and at the back of your mind you're thinking oh my god i have committed so many sins all my life i have been away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how in the world is it possible for a sinner like me to be forgiven by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has committed so many sins all his life so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his prophet to tell the believers, قُلْ Tell them, يَا عِبَادِي O oh my servants, you call me God, so you are my servants. I take ownership of that. So you know what? الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ People who have committed countless sins. Listen, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Never be hopeless of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Never lose hope, because the doors to repent is open, always open for you. So never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa taala. Why? إن الله يغفر الذنوب. Allah subhanahu wa taala indeed forgives sins. What? How many? Jamia, all of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next piece of this ayah, Inna hu, it is only he who is capable of doing that. None of you can do it. None of you can forgive other people completely, 100%. And when he forgives, he makes the angels forget. He makes those book of deeds Forget those sins. So when the book of the deeds shall be presented on the day of judgment, there will be no account of those sins. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورِ He is the one who is all forgiving. And on top of that, الرحيم, the most merciful. He is the one. Because He's so merciful, He doesn't want any one of you to suffer. He wants all of you to enjoy the eternity, the eternal life of Jannah. But the question is, he is putting a question in front of us. How many of you realize that you are a sinner and repent? Now that is a big thing. Sometimes people lose hope to an extent that they don't even want to go to him. There are people who would come till the doorstep of the masjid and will turn back. Somehow, somehow the trigger has not yet happened for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Come to me, 
Right in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِن قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ And return to your Lord and submit to Him before the day of punishment shall come. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ لَا تُنصَرُونَ If the day of punishment comes for those people who have been committing sins and their sins outweigh the good deeds, they shall meet the punishment. And when that time has come, then you have lost it. Then there is nothing left for you except for saying, I wish I could have. Avoid these words and come to me now because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raheem. Now let's come in the books of hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does he introduces himself? Reported by Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, lamma khalaq Allahu al-khalq, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all beings, kataba fi kitabihi, he wrote in his book, وَهُوَ يَكْتُبُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ And he wrote it for himself. وَهُوَ وَضْعٌ عِنْدَهُ عَلَىٰ الْعَرْشِ And the book is with him at, in Arsh. إِنَّ رَحْمَتِي My mercy تَغْلِبُ غَضَبِي Will going to overcome my anger. So I'm writing it upon myself that my mercy will always overcome my anger. So it takes a lot to make him angry. But when he becomes angry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam and so many places in the Quran that when we wipe them off, you don't even hear their footsteps. Forget about their runes, forget about their remains. There is no sign of them left over to be looked at. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another hadith, now this hadith was reported by Sahih al-Bukhari, and Imam Bukhari reports it, Imam Muslim reports it, Imam Nasa'i reports it, Imam Tirmizi reports it, and Imam Ibn Majah reports it. So except for Abi Dawood, in among the first six books of hadith, the top six books of hadith, five of them report this hadith. Another one which is reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Nasa'i and Imam Tibrani, there is one difference of the word and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna rahmati, my mercy supersedes, sabaqat ghadabi, supersedes it. And now I would like to bring to you a long hadith we're all going to tell you later on which books of hadith it has been reported in. This is reported by Abi Dhar Ghaffari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he says, Anin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fi ma rawa anillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala annahu qal. So this is hadith al-Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uttering the words, and the Prophet is saying, Allah is saying that. Among all the hadith, this is the top-notch hadith. These are the words of Allah, but not in Qur'an. Revealed to us through the Prophet. And when these hadiths are reported in the books al-Bukhari and Muslim, now these are the topmost in the category of sahih. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, O oh my servant. Now here's an ownership. We need to feel this ownership because he is saying, Ya ibadi, O oh my servant. Inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman. I have made it haram on myself to do injustice. And I have made it haram for you to do injustice. So, فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا يَا عِبَادِي Do not do injustice. يَا عِبَادِي O my servant. ضَالٌ كُلُّكُمْ ضَالٌ إِلَّا مَنْ هَدَيْتُهُ I'll tell you your place and your picture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the ground reality in the next many lines to come. He's saying, you know what? All of you are led astray except for those that I decided to guide. فَاسْتَهْدُونِي So ask guidance from me. أَهْدِكُمْ I'll guide you. 
Ya ibadi, O oh my servant. Kullukum ja'i'un. All of you are hungry. Illa man ata'amtuhu. Except for those that I decide to do, to feed. Fastat'imuni ut'imkum. Ask me to feed you, I'll feed you. Now think about it. There are people who have so much wealth in their hands that they can buy any food on the face of the earth, but by doctor's recommendation, they can't eat anything. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. They can't eat anything. They can buy anything. And on top of that, there are people who can't afford to buy anything so that they're hungry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides them when they lose hope. When there is no hope, He provides them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am the one who gives, so why don't you come to me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi kullukum ma'arin. All of you are naked. You can't afford to buy yourself clothes. You can't afford to even make clothes if I do not provide you with means. Ya ibadi kullukum ma'arin. Illa man kasawtuhu fastaksuni aksukum. So ask me. I will give you cloth to wear. Ya ibadi, O oh my servants, innakum tukhti'una bil-layli wa nahar you commit sins night and day. Wa ana aghfiru dhunub I am the one who forgives sins. Jami'an, all of them. Fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum. Ask me and I will forgive your sins. Ya ibadi, innakum lan tablughu darri fatadurruni wa lan tablughu naf'i fatanfa'uni. You are not capable of harming me or you are not capable of benefiting me. You are nothing. So, ya ibadi, listen to me. Law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum. The people who have gone, and the people who are present, and the people who are going to come. وَإِنْسَكُمْ وَجِنَّكُمْ From the humans and from the jinn. كَانُوا عَلَىٰ أَتْقَ قَلْبِ رَجُلٍ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْكُمْ If all of you have the heart of the most pious person among you, مَا زَادَ ذَلِكَ فِي مُلْكِ شَيْئًا You will not going to increase a little bit in my wealth, in my control, in my kingdom. And يَا عِبَادِي all of you together, those who are gone and those who will come, or the ins and the jinn, the humans and the jinns. If you are at the worst of the heart conditions, the worst person among you, you won't be able to extract anything out of my kingdom. If all of you, the entire humanity, the entire jinns who have ever come, will ever come now, gather together to ask me with your list of shopping list, your wish list, and ask me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me everything on this list, and I give you everything on this list. That if you take a little needle, and you dip it in a sea, and you take it out, however much water it collects, not even that you will going to decrease in my kingdom. If I fulfill all of your wishes. Allahu Akbar, ya ibadi, O my servants. Innama hi a'malukum uhsiha lakum thumma uwafikum. All that you do is with me. All that you do is with me. When you come to me, I shall give to you. So why are you worried? Why are you in despair? You are my ibadi. You are my servant. And my servant can't be hopeless. My servant can't be hopeless. And this hadith, and this longer than I did, basically gave you a portion of this hadith, is reported by Imam Muslim. Imam Tirmidhi wa Ibn Abi Shayba wa qala Tirmidhi hadha hadithun hasanun. And the Tirmidhi said, this hadith is hasan. And in another hadith, which is reported by Imam Tirmidhi ibn Imaja, Imam Ahmad, in Musnad Ahmad, there is another part of this hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know why am I capable of doing all of these things? And how can I make all of these claims? Because, ذَلِكَ بِأَنِّي جَوَّادٌ 
Because I am the most generous. Majidun, the glorious one. Afalu ma urid. This is my power. Whatever I wish, I do it. Atai kalamun. If I want to give to anybody, I just have to say it. Wa adabi kalamun. If I want to take away anything, I just have to say it. Inna ma amri li shayin ida aratuhu an akula lahu kun bayakun. If I decide to do anything, all I have to do is say happen, and it happens. That's my power. That is why I am the Rabb. That is why I am the Ilah. That is why I am the Maliki Yawmiddin. That is why you must say, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqeem al-sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa al-dhaleen. This is why you should come to me. In another hadith reported by Anas ibn Malik, قَالَ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسِلَّمَ يَقُولُ He says, I heard from the Prophet, he said, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى That means, this is also hadith al-Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا إِبْنَ آدَمْ O son of Adam, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ If you come to me and ask forgiveness, whatever sins you bring, I'll forgive you. Wala ubali. It doesn't make any difference to me. But we're going to make a day and night difference for you. Ya ibn Adam. Now this is the beautiful hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing to us. Ya ibn Adam. O son of Adam. Law balakta dhunubaka anana sama. If you start stacking up your sins and your sins are that high that they reach the skies, the heavens, لَوْ بَلَغَ ذُنُوبَكَ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي Then you come to me and ask for forgiveness. غَفَرْتُ لَكَ I will forgive you. وَلَا أُبَالِي It doesn't make any difference to me. Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam. إِنَّكَ لَوْ أَتَيْتَنِي بِقُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَا That if you fill this earth, fill this earth with your sins, if you start laying him down horizontally and fill it up with khataya, thumma laqitani, then you come to me. And here is the condition. La tushrik bi shay'a. Never associate anybody with me. I am your Lord. I am your ilah. I am your Rabb. I am everything. You, have, you cannot associate with me. As long as you believe in me and my oneness, la tushrik bi shay'a. لَأَتَيْتُكَ بِقُرَابِهَا مَغْفِرًا That however much sins you will bring, I will forgive them all for you. The quantity doesn't matter. وَرَوَاهُ التِّرْمِزِي وَالطِّبْرَانِ وَأَبُو نُعَيْمِ فِي الْحِلْيَةِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ This is reported by Tirmizi وَالطِّبْرَانِ وَأَبُو نُعَيْمِ فِي الْحِلْيَةِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ Now comes another question. I've sinned. I repented. And I have hopes. What should I do? How can I fix myself? How can I improve myself? How can I be there where I want to be, where I will be accepted? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers all of these questions very simply in Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٌ for you, it doesn't matter which part of life you belong to, which phase of life you are in, which age in life you are in, there is a role model for you in the life of my Prophet. My Prophet, you will find each and every problem solution in him. Why? Because this is the Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a very big claim in Surah Al-Qalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to his Prophet and says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ When we created you, when we made you, when we sent you, we put you at the highest possible standards ever imaginable by anybody. That's where your standards are. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now this is to us. Now these ayahs, when we should read, the skin should not be straight, staying straight. The skin should change and tremble because your Lord is speaking. He 
speaking to us. Ikramah radiallahu rahmatullah alayhi, he was from the companions, students. There would be time when he would be reading the Quran and there will be a state that he would achieve when he would start crying. And people will ask him, Ya Ikrama, Limada, why? He says, You know what? I am worthless and my Lord is talking to me. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O those of you who believe, Atiyu Allah wa Atiyu Rasul. You have to abide. By the rules given to you by Allah and His Prophet. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday illahi wa rasulih. Do not try to go ahead of Allah and His Prophet. Do not try to defend your mistakes and, ah, that's okay. Ah, you know, it's okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not going to pick me on this. No. Now this ayah is so important, the ayah that I'm about to recite to you. Oh my God, when Sahaba would have received this ayah, I don't know what would have they been gone through. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَرْفَعُ وَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِي Oh, those of you who believe, never raise the frequency of your voice higher than the frequency of the Prophet. وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ Do not talk to him like you talk among yourselves. Why? And these are believers. These are people who have committed enormous amount of good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you do this, I will going to put them all aside. أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَكُمْ I will destroy your deeds. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ You wouldn't even know. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us through this book that there is something called respect. There is something called etiquette. You cannot lose yourself just because you are somebody. This is my prophet. That is why ulama say, when you go in Masjid al nabi when you enter the city of Medina, Allahu Akbar, you have to be extremely careful. When you're going to the road of Nabi, la tarfa' wa sawtakum sawtakum sawtakum. Respect is the core of this faith. Respect is the core of this religion. We cannot, by no means, progress if we are disrespectful. Look at the way we talk. Look at the way we approach matters. We are arrogant people to start with there's a lot of work to be done there's nothing to be that proud of we have to go back to our roots we have to go to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn because the disrespectful people in Medina were the munafiqeen the munafiqeen the hypocrites would come out in public as one but their hearts would be something else so when their leader died, look at the mercy of the Prophet. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, even though he knows this is the leader of the hypocrites, he still goes on his grave and still is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive him. And Allah says, O Prophet, astaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum. You ask for their forgiveness or you don't ask for them. In tastaghfir lahum sab'ina marratan. Even if you ask 70 times, in Arabic 70 is also used for increased amount of abundance, infinity. Allah will not forgive these people. Why? They denied Allah. Now somebody will say, they didn't deny Allah, they believed in Allah. They were idol worshippers, to them Allah is the supreme God. But notice the next ayah, Allah, the next word in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Because, oh my Prophet, they didn't deny, but they denied you. If they deny you, how can I forgive them? Because it is, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Muhammad Rasulullah. Without Muhammad Rasulullah, the shahada is not complete. 
So how can you be denying him and be disrespectful to him? And when a hadith is presented to us, and when things from the life of the Prophet are presented to us, we keep them aside and do what our nafs wants. Isn't this a disrespect? Isn't this a disrespect? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, I will forgive your sins. But you have to come to me. And come to me is a matter of respect. You respect him. You respect the words of his prophet. You respect the life of his prophet. You respect the teachings of his prophet. That's why you will go to that Lord that is introduced to us by that prophet. How did we knew and learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Muhammad, qul hu Allahu ahad. Tell them that I am the Allah, the one. You tell them. So how can we pass, pass him and go to the Lord and accept, expect things? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell them, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you love Allah, then what should you do? Fattabi'uni, follow me. Prophet, tell them that they should follow you if they love Allah. Yuhbibkum Allah, Allah will love them back. Allah will love them back. This loving back is possible how? Through the door of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And Allah will forgive your sins because who is He? He is the most forgiving and He is the most merciful. So there are two things I wanted to talk about today. One is... Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a reminder for myself and everybody who is here and not here. Never lose hope in His mercy. As long as we are living, we should constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us because we are all sinners. We sin night and day. We sin all the time. Even if we pray, our prayer is not 100% there. It's not up to par. We just do it. So it is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He accepts it from us. So there is a hope that we have our hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the second thing is be respectful. Respect is an utmost foundation of this faith. This faith is not built on arrogance. This faith is not built on hatred that I will follow the certain school of thought so I will disregard everybody and be disrespectful to them. It is the religion of love. It is a religion of love that needs to be practiced with love. Things have to go beyond the throat and the tongue at the heart level. And this needs to be practiced in daily life. This embracing has to happen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم